Hey, it's David Elder, and today on Texas Eats, we're traveling all across the Lone Star State looking for great restaurants you won't want to miss. Get ready for gigantic burritos served up Cali style right here in the Alamo City. Oh, that's spicy. Damn. That's spicy. That's awesome. Give me some love. Damn. Plus, we're hitting the road for some unbelievable grilled cheese creations. Mm-hmm. Wow. Told you. I love this. And we're checking out some of the best sticky buns and cinnamon rolls in the Alamo City. <laughs> How is it? <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's amazing, bro. <laughs> All that and more right now on Texas Eats. First stop on today's foodie adventures at a seafood restaurant serving up some of the best food you can find in the new brothels area. Let's go inside McAdoo's. Joining me now is the executive chef out here at the restaurant, Obed Magana. Thank you so much for having us, man. Thank you. Pleasure being here. Right in front of us, you have the hits off the menu. I mean, it smells fantastic in here. Talk to me about the restaurant. How did this all get started? So this is the original post office in New Braunfels. It was built back in 1915. It served as a post office for almost 70 years. But in 2009, we turned it into what you see right now, which is McAdoo's Seafood Cajun Restaurant. I mean, some of the best food, if not the best food in the city, which is awesome. You guys just got a couple awards for that. Yeah. And I want to start out this one right here, the seafood fondue. Yes, sir, that's our best selling appetizer. It's got a little bit of spinach, some mushrooms, some crawfish, and some shrimp, all with our creamy Thibodeau sauce, and that's paired with our beautiful garlic bread. Grab a little piece, we're going in. All right, cheers to cheers. you, the seafood fondue. Bro. Oh my god. The seafood fondue is definitely the starter that you have to get when you come out here to the restaurant. It's loaded up, it's got those seafood elements in there, plus mushrooms and all that cheesy, creamy goodness. Garlic bread on the side, made in house. I mean, it is the only way to start your day out here at McAdoo's. You also have some different entrees, and this one right here, this filet, it looks fantastic. What's going on with that? So that is our Chilean sea bass. It's served on a bed of crab fried rice with a little bit of some heirloom soy glazed carrots. And then on the top, we have some delicious pickled mango topped with some micro cilantro just to put it over the edge. Cheers. Cheers. That's the vibe. <laughs> Whoa. The Chilean sea bass has a nice crust on the outside and then it's tender on the inside. And then on the bottom, that crab fried rice on there. And then you have some of the carrots on there, a little bit of mango on top. And it has that perfect flavor combination that you want with the rice and the filet. It's so good. You have another popular dish. What's going on with this one? So this is our Mahi Mahi Mardi Gras. It's gonna be served on a bed of jambalaya. Our jambalaya is very authentic. It has Andalui sausage in there. And then it's paired with some charred Brussels sprouts. Those are tossed in a sherry honey vinaigrette with a little bit of bacon. And then some pickled okra and some purple microgreens on top just to give it that all Mardi Gras feeling, you know? All right, cheers. Cheers. There we go, the Mardi Gras. Every time, every time. All these are winners, bro, oh my gosh. The Mahi Mardi Gras has so many different flavors in it. it has that jambalaya on the bottom, on the top, that Mahi is just covered in this sauce that they're making in-house that is just incredible. And then they have some different colors in there as well, so it's playful, and it's a very clean, refreshing bite. Last but not least right here, you have an almond crusted flounder. Talk to me about that. Our almond crusted flounder uh, is gonna serve on a bed of Cajun couscous. It's a little bit different, something that I add to the menu just to bring some freshness to it. That has a little bit of bell peppers and green onions. And then we have our broccolini that's seared to perfection. And then on top we have a little bit of a Cajun bruschetta. We added some roasted poblanos and some roasted bell peppers just to add that kick to it. And then it has a little bit of our lemon butter sauce on top just to, you know, again, put it over the edge. Goodness, that sounds amazing. In the front, you have two more dishes. Just give us the names, what's going on with those? Yeah, so I mean, we are in New Braunfels, Texas, and you can't go without a chicken fried ribeye, so we have our own chicken fried ribeye here. This is with a 12-ounce Angus steak, 
And then we have right next to it, our shrimp brochette served on our dirty rice. And you can't go wrong with those perfectly grilled shrimp. They're delicious. Oh my gosh. And then you have a dozen oysters here. These are raw, freshly shucked oysters. And then over here, you have the, like the Rockefeller oysters. Yeah, right? traditional Rockefeller oysters. They have spinach, they have some bacon, some Parmesan, and our delicious butter on top. So I'm gonna grab one of these. You guys, McAdoo's in New Braunfels, one of the best places you can find in and around this area in Texas, let alone just the city. This is where it's at. Oh, but give me some love, man. They're killing it out here. You have to come visit. I'm gonna take it straight. Cheers to you, McAdoo's. You gotta come check it out. Phenomenal. Well, that's exquisite. Mm, that was really good. That was good. <laughs> now, we're headed to the newest restaurant in the Pearl area, serving up food inspired by the flight path of a native Texas bird. Let's see what's on the menu at Karaki. Joining me now is the executive chef out here at the restaurant, Evan Gonzalez. Thank you so much for having us out here. Thank you for coming. And right in front of us, we have a sample of some of the top items on the menu, including just platters that are loaded up. I mean, you even have the caprito out here, and you have, it looks like a big chalupa, but it's like a nacho kind of style, right? Yes, it's uh, our Cherokee nacho that is uh, a tlayuda, which is made out of corn, uh, with some quesillo black beans and some brisket ends. And pronounce the name of the restaurant for me, Kereki. Karaki. Karaki. And that is a little bird, right? It is a green jay, uh, native to South Texas. And I love the idea behind the restaurant. It's the flight path of that particular bird yep. and the areas and regions of South Texas where it flies through, and that's the influence on the menu. Yes, that is correct. So we do a little bit of everything. The biggest thing for us is that we want it to feel like you're in someone's home. We have the privilege of being in the old Liberty Bar, also known as the Baylor House. Right above us, you have the original wood floors. It is beautiful. I mean, it feels like like you're in someone's home. This is incredible. When you come in here, you're gonna be blown away just by how beautiful it is. And then you're gonna eat the food and get blown away by that as well. And that's what I wanna dive into. Right here in the front, you have this beautiful plate here. You got a little pickled red onion on there. And that's the cabrito, right? Yeah, that's the cabrito right there. This has been smoked with pecan wood. It also has a pecan sweet mole on top of it. A little bit of pickled uh, red onion, a little toasted sesame seeds, and uh, the banana leaf that has actually been wrapped in uh, oh. outside in the barbecue pits. Look how tender that is. That's just falling apart. Cheers. Cheers. That's the bite. Oh my goodness. The cabrito is so tender. Then you have that mole that's on top, slightly smoky. Everything just works so well together. It's bright and flavorful, especially with those pickled red onions on there. You just get that all together in the one bite. This does come with rice, beans, and tortillas on the side. So I can imagine just getting a tortilla, loading that thing up, and going to town. This stuff is delicious. That process of making it, it takes a long time, right? Yeah, we get this uh, goat that comes, this cabrito that comes out of uh, Windy Hill and out in Bernie. We butcher the whole animal. And then after we put it on a brine, we rub it down with some more chilies. After that, we wrap them up in banana leaves and then we drop that into our underground pits. And you could tell the love that's getting put into there because it's just so tender. So for, I want to eat the whole thing right now. That's a Karaki nacho. This is just more of that traditional style, of just a layer of beans, cheese, our pickled curtido with our leftover brisket ends that we trim up after we present for other dishes. You gotta use it all. All right, that's the Karaki nacho. Bro, there's more love on that one. The Karaki nachos are so delicious. It's like one big chip. You split it up, very shareable on top. You have some of the burnt end sides from the brisket, then you have jalapenos and carrots. And then on the base of it all, you have their refried black beans that they're using a chili oil in. Oh my goodness, it is so good. Now it's shareable, but you could definitely eat this by yourself. Now it's on to these big platters here and you have a seafood one from the coast. You also have a meat based one, more proteins from the pit. Now I wanna talk about this one right here, the coastal version. You got some lime, some guacamole, you have some salsa on there as well. What was the influence behind this and what is like the kind of the star of this whole platter? You know, you have Texas brown shrimp in there. We have some snapper in the Gulf. So this is something lighter, much heavier here. But yeah, this one definitely looks heavy though. I mean, this is, you got brisket, you have quesadillas in the front and you have like, Little potato action going yeah, on so right here. Yeah, we have papas bravas. Uh, basically, there's Yukon potatoes tossed in some salsa matcha and some beef fajitas with also another escabeche here. The quesadillas are actually filled with uh, smoked beef cheeks. Oh my gosh. Cheers to you. Cheers. 
Oh, wow. That's got a little punch to it in there. Now, I also want to try some of this brisket over here. Look at this, super tender. Look at the bend on that, a fat cap on there, and then you have this nice bark on there as well. You pull on it, and it just comes right apart. All right, cheers, cheers. to you. That's the brisket. Oh, my goodness. Y'all putting some barbecue places to shame with that brisket right well, there. I don't want to compete with uh, elite barbecue <laughs> restaurants, but we but just want to do it the Cherokee way. Amazing brisket. Thank you. Super tender, slightly smoky. The fat is rendered perfectly. That is amazing. Everything has so much love and time put into it. They have so much flavor, different seasonings, and it's all influenced by Central South Texas. All the fish butchered here in house, the cabrito butchered here in house, there's a lot of love into what they're doing. And when you try the food, you can definitely tell. You guys, Karaki out here, brand new restaurant, right outside the Pearl, gorgeous. What they've done here to the old Liberty Bar building, the smoking pits that they have in the back, it feels like Central Texas, it feels like South Texas. You guys are doing such a great job. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Grab a cocktail, the bar program out here is incredible as well. Cheers to you, chef. Cheers, thank you. All right, that's the bite. You guys are killing it. Coming up later on Texas Eats, we're checking out some of the best sticky buns and cinnamon rolls in the Alamo City. How is it? <laughs> oh my God, that's amazing, bro. <laughs> and next on the show, we're hitting the road for some unbelievable grilled cheese creations. Mm-hmm. Wow. Told you. I love this. So don't go anywhere. Texas Eats will be right back. Welcome back to Texas Eats. Now we're here in Katy to go inside of a restaurant that's serving up all kinds of grilled cheese sandwiches. Plus, they have some new items on the menu. It all got its start in Houston. Let's go inside the Twisted Grilled Cheese. Joining us now is one of the founders out here at the restaurant, Aaron Wilrich. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you for coming. And right in front of us, you can see some of the hits off the menu, some of them your favorites. We even have some side items, desserts that are brand new out here as well. And how did all of this get started? So we were founded in 2019. We actually started as a food truck. We were open about four days a week at one food park, same location every week for like a year. And we wanted to treat it like a brick and mortar so customers knew where they could find us. We took customer feedback into consideration and you know, here we are. These look out of control delicious. I want to start right here with this one. What's going on on the inside? A lot. So that's our halal Philly cheese steak. It's got halal Philly steak, marinated ribeye. It's got some really great cheeses. There's provolone, mozzarella, different types of Americans. Um, it's topped with halal sauce that we make in-house. One of the fan favorites. You can get it on the side as well, but it's really tasty. All right. Cheers to you. Let's take a bite. Cheers to Philly. There we go. That's the bite. <laughs> oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. Give me some elbow. Ooh. Bam. Look at that. That's delicious. I love the flavors on the inside. The meat, everything just kind of has that little bit of saltiness you want. So it's crunchy, it's tender on the inside, it's gooey. That's fantastic, I love that. Talk to me about this one right here. That's our avocado BLT plus E, meaning fried egg. It's got some yummy avocado mash, and some great apple with smoked bacon, of course the fried egg, white cheddar inside, just yummy. Oh my gosh. Cheers to you. Cheers. That's the bite. Mm-hmm. Wow. Told you. I love this. The avocado mixed with that fried egg on there, tomato, bacon, oh my goodness, it's so clean, refreshing, and it has that nice little cheesy gooiness you want out of the grilled cheese. But this one actually tastes like you're doing something healthy. So it's a really good alternative, especially in the summertime. Now, if you want to go even crazy though, you take it to the next step, talk to me about this one. This is our fan favorite, like super top seller smokehouse brisket. Of course, the name says it all, it's smokehouse brisket. It's got one fried onion ring, barbecue sauce, there's some pickled jalapenos inside, and of course, a variety of cheeses. Okay, cheers to you. Cheers. Oh my gosh, this is smokehouse, that's a bite. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's right. 
Wow, this brisket sandwich, I mean, it's the quintessential barbecue bite that you want. You have that fried onion ring on the inside. You got the little pieces of pickle on there as well. Then you have all that brisket, barbecue sauce, cheese, and that bread on the outside. It's just over the top. It's crunchy. Barbecue sauce on top of that. It's so good. It's just flavors on flavors, especially if you're looking for that barbecue bite, that's the one to get. As much as I want to finish all of these grilled cheese sandwiches, we got so much more to talk about. And what's going on with these guys? Those are mac and cheese balls. We make those in-house. They are very, very detailed. I want to just split one of these guys open. Look at the, oh my gosh. Look at the inside of that. Cheers. Cheers. Wow. Delicious. I love that item on there. You also have some loaded fries yes. and then some dessert items. Talk yes. to me about all this going on over here. So these are our brisket fries. They also come in a steak option, halal steak. So this is going to be a spin on the brisket sandwich. It's going to have our crisp cut potatoes. We have our smokehouse brisket. There's jalapenos and a sauce that we make in-house. We call it a jalapeno cheese sauce. Oh. Yes. So it's got a little kick. Now the dessert items, one of them's new. One of them's new. So yes, these are going to be our twisted funnel cake fries. Funnel so, cake fries. Funnel I mean, you can't fries. go wrong. You put funnel cake out there. You know everybody loves a funnel yeah. cake. Come on. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. And what's going on with that one? So these are our cheesecake donut holes. We actually infuse those with the cheesecake mousse that we make in-house. So they're going to get dusted with powdered sugar, a little brown sugar, caramel, chocolate drizzle that we love oh so much. Mm -hmm. Twisted grilled cheese. You got to come out to Katie for this new location. It's been here for a couple months. They're all across Houston, so go check them out. Plus, I can imagine you're going to be spreading across the state soon, right? Definitely. We would love to. Yeah. Cheers to you. Thank Cheers. you so much. This is where it's at. That's the funnel cake fry. Hey. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, this is so good. Coming up later on Texas Eats, James Beard Award finalist Chef Chris Williams cooks up some delicious, well-refined Southern cuisine. Oh my goodness, that's incredible. Oh my gosh. And next on the show, we're checking out some of the best sticky buns and cinnamon rolls in the Alamo City. That was a... <laughs> oh my God, that's amazing, bro. <laughs> so don't go anywhere. Texas Eats will be right back. Now we're here in San Antonio off Vance Jackson Road to go inside of a restaurant that's serving up classic sticky buns, cinnamon rolls, and get this, cinnamon roll sandwiches. Let's go inside Old Fashioned Sticky Buns. Joining me now is the co-owner out here, Brian Goodrich. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you, welcome. And right in front of us, I mean, we got sticky buns, we got cinnamon rolls, sandwiches, and a cheese board. How did all of this get started? Well, this is actually from my wife's family and her own invention. She's very talented, and we started making our own recipes, trying to put old and new together. And she's lived in uh, Beaver Dam, Kentucky, probably third or fourth generation. So. so it's an old Kentucky sticky bun recipe right there. Now, we're going to start with the sticky buns. How are they prepared? But these are uh, made from scratch daily and we use buttermilk and, and real butter. So definitely made old fashioned way. So we have to make the yeast and we mix the flour and uh, it has to rise for about an hour. Now once they come out of the oven, you roll them out. You had to add all that flavor onto the inside as well. They come out of the oven nice and hot, and then you're covering them in this sticky sauce on top. Yes. Can, that, you, can you share some secrets about the sauce? Pecan and maple syrup is the uh, two main ingredients for that glaze. We're going to go in. Let's get a little piece of it. Here we go. Cheers to you. The sticky buns. That's the bite. How is it? <laughs> oh, my God. That's amazing, bro. <laughs> The old-fashioned sticky bun is out of control. The pecans on there, that maple flavor, and all of that butter. I mean, this is just sugar on sugar, and it is delicious. Definitely the item you have to try when you come out here, especially if you've never had a sticky bun before. This is it. Now, cinnamon rolls. People are a little more familiar with the cinnamon roll over the sticky bun, right? Talk to me about the sauce that goes on top. Well, this is our vanilla glaze. It's a traditional made. It's made with powdered sugar, and we have our vanilla in it. And so it's the same dough as our sticky bun, so you're going to get the same experience with the uh, old timer as you will the sticky bun. You know what? My favorite part of all these things is always the center. There you go. That's the cinnamon roll. Mmm. Give me some love. The cinnamon rolls that they're making out here are using that same base that they're using on everything else, especially with the sticky buns, but then they're adding on that vanilla glaze on top, and it's just a classic cinnamon roll bite. But that center of that thing, it's ooey, gooey, delicious. I mean, I went back and I finished the whole thing. If 
you want to go more savory, you have sandwich options as well. And that's what we're looking at out here. You have two different kinds. Which ones do you have? I have the bacon, egg, and cheese cinnamon roll sandwich, and I've got a ham, egg, and cheese cinnamon roll sandwich. All right, which one's your favorite? Uh, I like the bacon, honestly. You like the bacon. All right, grab a bacon. I'm going for the ham. It is massive. I mean, look at that's the head ratio here. These are next level, man. I had a big head. It's not going to do justice. <laughs> Cheers to you. That's the bite. Come on, brother. Come on, man. <laughs> this is incredible. Thank you. Mm. Something that they're doing here at the restaurant that I haven't seen anywhere else, they're making these savory cinnamon roll sandwiches. They're putting powdered sugar on top, and on the inside, they're using eggs. You can use bacon or ham and the cheese on there. It's the same exterior that's on the sticky buns and the cinnamon rolls. Then you get it in that savory sandwich bite. It's so good. Now, these are fantastic options. You have a lot more on the menu. Plus, if people are interested in catering options, that's what the cheese board's here for. Yes. But you can also get these rolls as a catering option, right? Absolutely. We, we do catering. A lot of people buy the 12 packs. We have them displayed so they're nice if you want to take them to a party. We really appreciate the support of the community. It's huge. And of course, when you come inside, you can make your own. So build your own. You get the base of the roll, and you can put whatever you want on top. It's just like a, a field day. You can have like a kid in a candy store, literally. There's candy in there. You can load it up. Brian and Rachel, thank you so much for having us out here, you guys. Old fashioned sticky buns here in San Antonio, solid spot. I'm telling you, you're gonna try the sandwiches, you're gonna try the cinnamon rolls, the sticky buns. It's gonna blow your mind, it's gonna be crazy. Here you go, cheers to you. Bink. Coming up later on Texas Eats, we're heating up things in the Texas Eats outdoor kitchen with a bright and bold grilled romaine and ribeye salad. And next on the show, James Beard Award finalist, Chef Chris Williams cooks up some delicious, well-refined Southern cuisine. Oh my goodness, that's incredible. Oh my gosh. So don't go anywhere. More Texas Eats is coming up right after the break. Welcome back to Texas Eats. Now we're here in the Museum District in Houston to go inside of an iconic restaurant that's serving up all kinds of delicious brunch items. Let's go inside Lucille's. Joining me now is the chef and owner out here at the restaurant, Chris Williams. Thank you so much for having us, man. Thanks for coming. And right in front of us, we have hits off the menu. This is from the brunch selection. I mean, you got a little bit of everything out here. And how did all of this get started? You know, I've been cooking for 25 years, everywhere from London to Lithuania, Canada, all up and down the East Coast. And then I finally came home, found this space, which was built in 1923. So we decided to name it after my great grandmother and everything started from there. Tell me a little bit about her and why you decided to name the restaurant after her. Uh, Lucille was a chef. She was a visionary. She was a barrier breaker. She set up one of the first commercial culinary educational programs in the country through Prayer View. She used to serve everybody from Joe Lewis to Martin Luther King, Eleanor Roosevelt, the list goes on and on. Well, I'll tell you what, you couldn't have named it after a better person. I mean, just, she sounds incredible. And the recipes that we have here in front of us, a chicken fried steak. Tell me about this dish. So this right here is it's a chicken fried 44 farm steak over our take on home fries. Grilled asparagus and a truffle gravy topped off with uh, sunny side up bite. My goodness. All right, get your fork and knife for me. We're gonna go in and we gotta get the little, we gotta pop the egg because that's what it's all about. Check that out. All right, here we go. Cheers. There we go. The chicken fried steak, that's the bite. Oh my goodness. That's incredible. Oh my gosh. The chicken fried steak is over the top delicious. It is so good. That gravy that's on there as well. It's so much flavor. You have all that seasoning that's inside of the dredge. So when it's deep fried, the meat just absorbs all of that as well. Then you have the potatoes on the side, the asparagus on there. You take a bite of all of that together, especially with the egg on top. It is next level delicious. I want to dive into this one here in the middle of the table. You got a Benedict, but it's not your typical Benedict, right? Yeah, this is one of my favorite things on the menu. So this is our country Benedict. It's essentially, it's a chicken fried poached egg. When you crack into it, you're gonna see it, it has a texture of fried chicken on the outside, still has a runny yolk on the inside. It's served over top of applewood bacon, collard greens, with a English muffin, obviously, on the bottom, uh, with a little bit of truffled hollandaise on top and Korean pepper. That is so beautiful. Cheers, that's the bite. Oh my goodness. Mm. This Benedict is one of the most unique bites I've had in a long time for a brunch item. The way they're deep frying the outside of that egg, getting that crispy exterior, just like a piece of fried chicken. On the inside, the egg is still running like a poached egg. It is so fun. You have the bacon on there, then on the bottom, that little English muffin. You put that all together with the greens on there, it makes for a really nice, well-rounded brunch bite. 
So with the omelet, it's oxtail is the way that we'd serve them typically on the menu, braised for seven hours, uh, using a pinsage, so it has a bunch of deep flavors up in there. We then harvest all the meat off the bone, make the egg base, put the meat in the middle with a little bit of jasper cloth cheddar, roll it up and then serve it with the braising jus and a little mixed uh, salad to cut through the richness of it. You go, cheers to you, the oxtail omelet, that's the bite. Oh my goodness, give us some love. I'm gonna add this one. Woo! My favorite bite has to be the omelet. All of that tender oxtail meat on the inside, all that au jus on the outside as well. So it's just like this savory pot of stew inside of an omelet. It is so good. And then on top you have those fresh greens and it just balances out the bite really well with those pickled onions. Definitely a must try item. Had my great-grandmother done all the things that Lucille had done, I would have named the restaurant after her as well. She sounds like such an incredible person and so iconic, especially all the culinary innovations and the way she progressed for women's rights and what she's done all throughout American history. It is just incredible. This is an exceptional bite. It is a very well-rounded meal. And you know what? I like that it's just enough to where you can start with some of these really famous biscuits right. and you still have room. Yeah. Plus, you also have drinks. You have a full bar over here. So yeah. when you come out for brunch, grab a mimosa, grab one of their cocktails they have on the menu. It's phenomenal. They have the tamales. They have it all out here. Thank you so much for having us, man. Thanks for coming, man. Lucille's in Houston. You definitely have to stop here when you're looking for an iconic restaurant in the area. I mean, this is a must go. This is it, bro. I'm going to keep going. <laughs> Coming up later on Texas Eats, get ready for gigantic burritos served up Cali style right here in the Alamo City. Oh, that's spicy. Man. That's spicy. Good, Give me some love. Man. Woo. And next on the show, we're heating up things in the Texas Eats outdoor kitchen with a bright and bold grilled romaine and ribeye salad. So don't go anywhere. Texas Eats will be right back. We're here at the outdoor kitchen. We got the grill going, and we're gonna show you how to make this really easy, bright and bold grilled steak salad. You grill off some of the lettuce, you got a ribeye steak on here, and it is delicious. Let's do it. The first thing we're gonna do to make this salad and the ribeye steak, you wanna wash all your produce first, and then you're gonna wanna cut them. The red onion, you wanna cut it as thin as possible. Tomatoes, you want to put them in quarters and halves, kind of mix it up so you have some variety. And then your limes, you're going to want to half some limes and then quarter some limes because the half limes we're going to put on the grill. The quarter limes we're going to squeeze over and kind of use more like a utility item. Avocado, you need one good avocado. This one is nice and ripe. You see good coloration on the inside. So right now what we want to do is cook this steak. We need to get this thing going. This is a gorgeous ribeye steak. Get some of our flaky sea salt. Go all over the top with that. And then fresh cracked black pepper right on top. Make sure your grill is nice and hot and then you're just gonna lay them in at a 45 degree angle and you wanna hear that sear. Now we're gonna get this to a medium rare. That's 130, 135 degrees internal temperature. All right, so we're gonna let this steak rest, pulling it right off the grill. Now we're gonna dress the lettuce and then throw the lettuce on the grill. You wanna get your lettuce that you've rinsed. Just put a little bit of the spray on there because you don't want it to burn, right? You're gonna put it right where you were cooking that steak, get some of that flavor off. Put a little bit of salt on there. Salt these bad boys up and then hit them with a little bit of cracked pepper. You just want to give them a little bit of character. So once the lettuce has been on there for just a couple minutes, you see it's getting some color, a little bit of character on the outside here. You're going to pull it off, put it right back onto the cutting board. Putting them on the grill, it wilts the leaves just a little bit. And you're going to come in once over the top, flip it. Once over the top. When you cut through it, you're going to get perfect little squares for your salad. To make the dressing for the salad, it's very easy. Extra virgin olive oil, a little bit of red wine vinegar, and this is the kicker. This is locally sourced honey, which is really good for you. And then to balance everything out, you're gonna do fresh cracked black pepper and a little bit of salt. Mix this all up until it's evenly incorporated. You're gonna see all that honey just kind of melts into the mixture here. And you're just gonna wanna add just a little bit to this, because you can always add more, but you can't take it away, right? So just a little bit, 
and just kind of toss it up. And taste as you cook. That's the most important thing. You gotta know if it tastes good, right? That's delicious. All right, next up, you're gonna pull some salt. This is Parmesan Reggiano. Pour some of that right in. Mix that up. I'm cheating today, but it makes it a lot easier. I'm gonna use pre-made croutons. Toss those guys in here too. Now you have enough salad to feed the whole team. And we're gonna start building our presentation. So we're gonna put this off to the side. Some of this thinly sliced red onion. Get some of these tomatoes right here. And this one, you can have fun. You'd be colorful, creative. Mix it all up. You're gonna wanna get some of this blue cheese crumble. Kind of gives it that steakhouse punch, right? Slice into it. We're gonna dress this up on the side like this. And you can just kind of fan them out. And last but not least, you wanna grill off some lines. That's gonna bring out a lot of that sweetness on these. Add some brightness to the entire salad. Put some of that grilled lime right on top of everything. Finish the whole plate off, a little bit of cracked black pepper and then a little more salt for good measure. You have all of the elements that we cut into here, the red onion, the avocado, tomato, the grilled lime is so important. You get some of those flavors out of there as well. The croutons, the grilled lettuce, and then the ribeye on the side. You kind of put it all together, get a little bit of everything. That's the bite. That's the salad. Mm. And to get this recipe, just go online, caseout.com slash Texas Eats. Go down, find the recipe, make it at home, and be a rock star. This is fantastic. Thanks to our friends at the Lone Star Barbecue Pro Shop for supplying us with everything that we need to get grilling and smoking out here. And if you want to barbecue like a pro, just go check them out. They're in Lotus. You have all their information on the screen right here. You can get all kinds of seasoning, sauces, cast iron pans, everything you need to be a professional in your own backyard. And next on the show, get ready for gigantic burritos served up Cali style right here in the Alamo City. Oh, that's spicy. Man. That's spicy. Good, Give me some love. Man. Woo! So don't go anywhere. Texas Eats will be right back. Welcome back to Texas Eats. Now we're here on the northwest side of San Antonio to go inside of a restaurant that's serving up Cali style burritos. Let's go inside stuff. Joining me now is Chan Sani. He's one of the owners out here at the restaurant. Thank you so much for having us. Thanks for having us. And right in front of us, man, you got all the hits off the menu. You got quesadillas. You have loaded breakfast burritos. You even have the carne asada, California style burritos and loaded fries. And how did all of this get started? Well, um, I first moved to uh, San Antonio in 2017, and then I met my business partner, Dimitri, through kids soccer. And so the first thing I asked him was, where are the Cali burritos? And he was like, there aren't any yet. And then we started doing it. Next thing you know, we started doing pop-ups, and here we are now. It has exploded with popularity, especially the surf and turf burrito. Talk to me about what's inside. It has a carne asada, it's a USA choice beef, and then we have these jumbo large shrimp in here, guacamole, pico, our famous hot sauce, and a lot of cheese and french fries. My goodness, you loaded this thing up. We did, we don't play. Now you have a lot of different sauces on the menu as well, including a hot sauce. Pour a little bit onto this one here. All right. Don't hurt me now. I won't, man. It does not wreck your palate. Cheers to you, the surf and turf with the house-made spicy sauce. Here we that's go. That's right. Oh, that's spicy. Man. That's spicy. Good, Give me some love. Man. This surf and turf burrito is absolutely insane. The shrimp is cooked so nicely on the inside. It's tender and that meat, that hard sear on the outside, you can tell it's a high quality piece of protein. It has that fat that's rendered really nicely on the inside as well. You have some of the French fries, some of the creaminess that's in there, some of that avocado, that, that guacamole on there, a little bit of pico that you can add in there as well. But that spicy salsa that they're making in-house, it's like creamy. It is a really good bite. And if you're looking for that surf and turf Cali style burrito, this is where you gotta get it. If you come out for breakfast, you can get a loaded, massive burrito. Now, we got a meat lovers, but we added some extra elements we to did. it, right? Our meat lovers comes with sausage, ham, bacon, and we also added guacamole, pico, and our avocado crema. Ooh, that's a loaded breakfast it right is. there. Look at this thing. This thing is crazy. I mean, this is insane. Look at the amount of egg you're getting in here as well. I'm exactly. gonna get you some red salsa. Oh, that's good, that's our, that's our regular habanero house. Y'all putting habanero in everything out here. <laughs> there we go, I'm gonna put some on there. Cheers to you. Cheers. Here we go. 
Oh, no. Give me some foot. Boom. Stuffed is not just about dinner or lunch. You can come out here for breakfast and you can get loaded burritos. These things got the sausage. You can get it with bacon, ham, eggs. You can get it with whatever you want. Now, I've got a meat lovers and I added guacamole and I also added pico de gallo to it, which I highly recommend. This thing came out stacked. It got the tater tots on the inside, the eggs, everything just melded together with that cheese. I mean, you're probably gonna finish half, wrap up the other half and save it for lunch. Called two stuff. Mm -hmm. It's all about burritos, but it's not just burritos. You can also get quesadillas and loaded fries. That's right. So talk to me about this one right here. It's like a stacker, right? Yes, this is actually something that my business partner came up with. This is like a quesadilla. But the reason why it's a stacker is a threefold. With the queso smothered on top, it's a thing of beauty. You know that you gotta put the queso That's on right. top. <laughs> Cheers to you. Damn, Cheers, this is the stacker quesadilla <laughs> with chicken on the inside. Mm. Ooh. I feel. That's good. <laughs> I've had a lot of quesadillas in my day, but I've never had a quesadilla stacker like this where they're folding it onto itself and adding the elements on the inside. The chicken is so good out here as well. The searing the outside, nice and tender and juicy on the inside. The quesadillas are so good and they're gonna fill you up. You guys gotta come out to stuff in San Antonio. It's Cali style burritos. You can get them surf and turf. You can get them classic OG style. Plus you can get loaded fries. Quesadilla stackers, you're not gonna find those anywhere else. It's a fun, inviting environment. There's so much good music going on. Plus you gotta grab a drink at the fountain and enjoy yourself while you sit down. Thank you for having me yeah, out of here. Coming out. All right, I'm gonna take another bite here because you know I'm not gonna let this go to waste. You gotta eat the whole thing. Yeah. Mm. Man, that's good. Give me some give me elbow. That's his goodness, y'all. Don't go anywhere. Texas Eats will be right back. Thank you so much for joining us on today's episode of Texas Eats. And to get more information and a map on all the restaurants that you've seen on today's show, just go to our website, ksat.com slash Texas Eats. Don't forget to follow us on social media at Texas Eats TV on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And don't forget to join us every Saturday at 10 o'clock in the morning right here on KSAT 12, because this is how Texas Eats.